bumpers on, grills on. I mean, it's not going anywhere. I bolted in the bottom of the bumper. The rest of the bumper is just sitting here, you know, just, you know, just sitting there with just tension on it, which is great because when I, I, I kind of made up my mind, I'm going to be using urethane on the bumper, not a, um, not a panel bond, just because it's a little bit more flexible. And I think that's, this is all squared away, you know, and the uh, hood's all squared away. We have to start looking at the fenders again because we started final fitting. Then now this is going to be the final final fitting, <laughs> I think, you know. But let me show you. You know we're going to have the worst problem with the one on the right. So let's just go to this one. It's the worst one to do. So let's just check out and see what we're going to do. We're now at the back part of the front fender, the right front fender. This is the worst one out of the bunch. So we might as well start here. What did I do? Well, I aligned up the front and I aligned up these lines here and on the door. That's, you know, that's, you know, your line, your eyesight for the lines is, is big. And then when you come up and look at the car, you want to see if the, what the gaps are. Well, the whole thing is <clears throat> this door is in as far as it'll go in, but this, this fender is actually probably about two millimeters inset where it has to come out a couple of millimeters. Also on the top here, where the cowling is, you know, for the windshield frame, is probably a good uh, 10 millimeters tall. You know, ab this is above it. How am I going to solve this? I've been trying. I, I've been trying to avoid this, you know, because what I'm going to do is I have to cut the fiberglass, and I'm just going to make a relief cut in the back. I'm going to make a relief cut, and it's going to have to go almost all the way down to the front, probably about, you know almost like eight nine inches from the front so it'll fold over and actually you know blend in that's gonna you know it it's gonna be hard because you know i'll bolt this back on there bring this down and then i'll cut the metal support that's that this is bolted onto then pull it back off you know shape the support put it back on put everything back on bolt it all together and then when i put it on the rotisserie i'll use fiberglass matting and fiberglass resin to go underneath here to support it i'm trying not to touch the external part because this is what you see i guess there's no better time than the present then let me just pull this pull this bumper off and let me bring it over to the bench and let's <laughs> cut this thing oh i don't want to do it <laughs> all right let's do this I sit there and, and put this ruler underneath here I can actually push this down where I couldn't before and you'll see it does push out not enough but it's gonna be close enough I burn through right here not bad because it's gonna be laid on the inside and I can cover it like there if I bring it down here it actually matches with the, the uh, line and bring it out a little bit more that way it's 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 pretty close here let me um, pull, I'm going to have to raise the hood again and push this thing down. I'm going to mark the inner, that inner uh, steel strap, take that off, cut it and bend it so we have a little bit more of a play. But this way it gets me the depth. That's the big thing. So let me just do that.
Here, take a look at this where it's just one little click hold and I have one bolt in the other side. I'll show you how much better it looks. Take a look at this back side. With just this little um, clamp on right here, it is really close. It is really close. Now, if I push down like this to push that metal piece down where I'm gonna weld it and I pull it out, you know, to give me some type of a gap right here, this almost closes, this is almost, you know, it's very, 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 very close, you know? And I really, uh, that is right there, I find is going to be the final position of it right there. Let's go over there and cut the other side so we can weld these fender plates in. And that way we can get this thing all squared away, you know, squared away exactly. And then go underneath and weld in those plates and do a, a couple more small things to get the episode ended up. But I think this is a, this is a really good sign that this thing pushed out. So you guys might have to just, you know, watch it. I burn through here, but just be careful when you do this. Push it out a little bit, you know, give it some weakness. Go back down, then you have to fill it back in with, with uh, uh, fiberglass, either, you know, uh, matting or uh, cloth or something like that. I got both, so... I'll figure out what I'm going to do. I'll probably use matting just because it, it, it'll, it'll seep into the, um, uh, the cut line better. But I'm pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with that. All right, let's run over to the other side. Cut the other side so we can get these, weld, these uh, fenders welded in on the left-hand side. Like we did before, this thing is much, much better than the other side. It looks like two people made them, you know. We still have a couple of millimeters right here. Same as even when we push that one down, it's going to be like that. So this actually looks like it's probably going to be, it's, it's going to be like the factory anomaly. And this will all fit up and it'll all be nice. All I'll do is just scribe this, bend this uh, plate over here that's attaching this and we'll get ready to weld this stuff all up. We're going to have to cut some of the fiberglass because that'll allow for the bend to go up because when I marked it, I marked it basically an eighth of an inch high, and it goes like this, it goes down through here, just trimming this stuff like it, ugh, yuck. But whatever, let's just get it done. Take a look here. I have it. It's virtually perfect right there, you know, here on the left hand side. This is a little bit um, inset, but it was just like over on the other side. We're going to have to live with it. I don't think we're going to fill it up, but we have the line right on the line. Have this line on this line. Here's this line right here. It's, it's pretty good. Maybe it goes down a little bit more, but very, very little, you know. I'm going to try and modify the door to push this in, but as long as we have these lines here, they're all right on the money. That's all I care about. You know? I mean, I'm looking straight down it like this, and it looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the front. Here's the front fender. Here it's equal, and this drops off a little bit. We can raise this just a little bit if we wanted to. We can also push this down a little bit if we want to just by bolting it to here, and that way it's exact. But take a look in the middle of it. This is the guy, what you're going to run into. The, 
The full back is equal. The full front is equal, and this thing curves up. Uh, uh, seven, eight millimeters at least, you know? I don't know what I can do. I can't really do anything because, you know, it's part of the hood. Uh, I'm gonna have to live with it. I might have to build it up a little bit. I don't know. Cut it down, I don't know, but for now, I gotta live with it. I got the front matched, I got the rear matched. That is, to me, right on, and, it's, and these are matched with the actual body. I'm happy with it, I'm gonna run with it. Let me do the other side, and then we can start going down to the bottom part of the fenders and uh, making the plates for those so we can um, get those finished up. Here we are at the front. Right here is equal, but it kind of dips away a little bit. Not bad, not bad at all. You know, um, this is a little, this has to be built up just a little bit to meet this, but if you go on the angle like this, it should, you know, go right to here. And also, you have to remember this fender, we are splitting the difference between rear and front because it was a half inch shorter. So we're probably, you know, we're, we're definitely a quarter inch short here and we're gonna be a quarter inch short up on the other end. I have no problem just balancing that out like that, you know? This fits pretty well. This fits pretty well. Take a look on the side. If you see right here, it fits really nice here. Kind of drops away, but that's the inconsistency of the, um, of the hood. Now let's go to the back of it. We have this line, it's all lined up. This line all lined up. This line all lined up. Let's take a look at the cowling. Here's the front windshield frame. It's lined up perfectly here. Kind of falls away a little bit. And then this is a little high. I think I prefer I prefer this one right here. And this line right here is all set. And it's, it's actually, it came out better than I thought it was going to be. The whole part of the hood on this side is much better, even though we kind of fix this fender. This hood, I'm going to probably drop down just a hair to split the difference here. But, you know, seeing how this is good, this matches up here. This matches here, but doesn't here, kind of falls away. You know what? I think we're going to have to live with it, unfortunately but I'm pretty happy with the way the fender fits. Let's uh, raise this thing up and then we're gonna start doing the bottom plates and uh, you know try and get the bottom sections basically tacked in before we weld the rest of it all up. We're here at the bottom of, this is the right side fender. And as you can see, this is as far down as it'll go and actually and be relatively square with the door. And I'm making it square up here, not down here. If I can possibly pull that in, great. No, if I can't, it, it can come out a little bit. But as you can see, this rocker is pretty close. It's it's virtually almost the same. It's maybe a mil maybe a millimeter down, but this is as far up as a rocker can go and still scrape right here. You know, uh, that's just one thing we have to do. But we're gonna, you know this is gonna have to go up like this. And what we gotta do is we have to make a plate on the bottom to protect it because. Let me bring you over to the other side. Now on this side, as you can see, when I push this up, here, let me grab this. There we go. We push this up. This plate, I'm gonna to have to weld onto this plate and bring it over here and wrap it around to protect this bottom lip of the fiberglass. Then we're gonna have the inner, lumber, inner uh, wheel well um, plate, which is gonna go like this, all the way up through, around, and there'll be a lip on the end. Which I never told you about, which I'm going to do the same thing there, but that has to be, everything has to be bonded in before I do that because I'm going to pretty much bond the, a steel lip to it with a panel bond. Let's um, get some cardboard. We're going to make a small template and weld it to this so we can still pull it down to get the fender off and weld it, just tack it right there. And when we have it on the rotisserie, we will fully weld it. No problem. Let's, uh, let's break out the cardboard. Looks about right. I'll give that a shot.
that's tacked in. Let's, uh, let's move forward. We're on the left-hand side front fender. This is the front portion next to the bumper. Remember we made this plate to give it a belt to try and figure out where, where we're going to put it. Well, what we got to do is sit there and figure out where we're going to slice it and how it's going to hold in. Let's look at the front of this and uh, show you what I'm going to do. On the outside, what are we trying to do? Well, the original Sport Quattro had this pretty much exposed, you know, just a little bit on the side. So if this thing goes in, okay, well, we got, we got, it, all, we got it all right. Getting this thing to suck in is going to be another problem, but I'm not even at that point yet. The main thing is, is getting the bottom, and the bottom is basically level. I want this to pretty much be a straight shot back, because that's what it'll look like in the pictures. So if I bring this thing up like this, that way I can tack it and it won't move. I can build the rest of the plates off of that and then I can um, continue the boxing into the top part of the fenders so we can get the lights fitted. So let's, let me uh, cut this over here so I can tack it in so it's completely stationary and then we'll finish the rest of this box section right there. That's all tacked in. It's, it's pretty much there. It's, it's not going anywhere, which is really good. And it's all boxed in. And we're waiting for that. Same thing over on there. Now we have to go up and get the rest of that stuff that I used to channel all the air into this cabin, you know, to block it from going into the fender. Now, uh, before I do that, I got to do one thing here. Take, Take a look at this. This is the mounts that I put down for the uh, intercooler. This is what happens when you rush. I just put through the mounts on here, put a bolt and lock the intercooler because I didn't want it to move. I want to, you know, be in exact place where I want to do. I don't want to be flip flopping around. Uh, I kind of broke my first rule. You know, it's such a large piece of aluminum. This, I don't, I want to kind of isolate the vibration from steel to aluminum because I don't want it to crack. What am I going to do is I'm going to use these. This is just another grommet, just like I used on the side of the intercooler with a sleeve. That's it. I believe these things came off the vacuum pumps in the back of the uh, Quattros. I can't remember, <laughs> honestly. I thought they did, but I can't remember. You know, it's just like, ah, okay. Um, what I got to do is, this thing is, is like that. So I got to make that hole that big. So I just have to hog it out. That's it. So don't do what I did. Rush. Get yourself um, or get this thing all squared away first with the grommet. Then put it in and mount the intercooler. That's what happens when you rush. So, all right, let's pull this thing down so we can start finishing up the top of the fender so we can put the headlamps in and finish up the episode. The next to the last of this penultimate thing is we have to start trimming all this up and we have to weld it to this section right here. Well, 
we're going to just make relief cut, cuts and bring it down, grind this stuff off, um, and grind this. I have to put a fill plate in here and then start pushing this all the way up to meet everything on where the fender is. <clears throat> it's, you know, it, this is like easy because we have the actual basic, uh, uh, basic plate in here. And then we just have to add on to it a little bit. It's not bad. Well, not fully done, but it, it gives me enough room and leeway. I just have to make a plate right here, which is not bad, but I want to get the headlamps in first. Let me go do the other side. That way you can get the headlamps in and get this thing squared away. enough so I can put the headlamps in. <laughs> oh, when I take the fender off and yeah, uh, one off, it's too hot. Um, when I take the fender off, I'll pound all that stuff in. And get all of That's probably going to be the uh, flip over with this. That's all I care about. Let's put the headlamps in. Okay, now fenders were all set. Bumper, hood, grill, that's all set. Last thing, big thing, headlamps. Headlamps go towards or they, they are in direct relationship with how they look with the grill. Does it matter to have the fenders on? No. Bumper, hood, no. None of that matters. It matters that the grill is on and in place. Now, the only way to reach the brackets or to weld the brackets on is to pull the fender off, which I'm going to do. And there's also one thing I, I, I kind of screwed up with the brackets before, and now that I'm going to be making it all fresh, I have an idea on what, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to use the brackets for two things instead of just one which is always a positive. All right, let me pull the fender off and let's uh, start on here on the right side. This is what we're gonna use. More of the Corrado and Mark III uh, uh, eight pillar tie-in stuff, you know, pretty much. You know, just to tear this up and the rest of the Euro van seat. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm down determined to use this thing. You know, all of it. Every single bit of that seat. Um, but hey, listen, recycling. And here we have our B2 Passat headlamp. All right. Now, one thing I got to do is I got to drill these things out just a little bit because of these have capture nuts in them. And this is where they're going to go. Right here, I'm going to use one on the bottom, one on the top. This is going to be for this side right here. I'll show you here in just a bit um, on my thought process on doing that. But let's uh, get this in here. This is where it's gonna go. So we have to put in mounts over here for brackets to make this um, basically not move around. Because if you ever had a broken adjuster on a headlamp and you're driving down the road, it's just annoying. It flops all around. So let me uh, cut up that bracket. Let me see what I can I'm cut it right down the middle and see what I can use. And I'll plug the, um, these two things out, put some screws in it, and we'll go from there. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm running into a little bit of a problem. You know, I need to bring this up about two mil to make it absolutely flat. Because 
I think if I, um, I got to pull the grow off. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it uh, so it doesn't move whatsoever. So I have to put everything back on if I do. All right, let's, let's mark this and pull this thing off so I can see if I can just, I, I put a little mark right here, but to see if I can bring it up a little bit. Um, I think it'll be, you know, we'll see what happens, but. All right, well, hopefully we can put this up tight like this. Let me show you what I'm gonna to use to attach it. It's actually, it's kind of interesting. Let me show you this. All right, you're probably wondering what I'm gonna use for the inside of that headlamp because we cut off the uh, right side of it, you know, looking at it, you know, where the fog light was. Because we can't put that in because it was way too big. Well, have you ever seen one of these? This goes to the bottom of a, well, this holds your battery down basically in an out in a um, Volkswagen Audi vehicle and in for a lot of other cars. What it does is this portion sits on the battery box, a bolt goes through here and clamps down on the battery and it doesn't go anywhere. I'm doing the same thing. I'm just copying that idea. What I'm going to use, this is going to be the, the basically the battery box and um, this, seeing how there's a double ridge. You can see there's one ridge here, you know, one piece of metal, another piece of metal. I'm just going to cut this to fit, trim it up, make a lip so it goes onto it, and you can bolt it down so you can adjust the headlight but still bolt it down. I'm not sure if I'm going to use one or two. I'll probably use two M6s on it. And also what I found out when I was opening and closing the hood numerous times off camera, um, where the latch mechanism sits on underneath the hood pin, it was starting to bend and distort. Because it's you know there's only such a small thin piece of metal there, and the way I had it bent into the to the A arm, I mean to the uh, a horn front horn, you know I screwed up. I should not. I you know I kind of looked at it and said, nah, I think it'll work. No, it didn't work. So what I did was I cut it, I I twisted it, and then I put a plate in there and gave it a tack. You know, and this thing will support it, and that way it's not gonna it's gonna be fit and finish done. You know. So let's first, uh, let me cut this up. I'm going to use the big portion to give us the most amount of meat we can there. And then I'll cut, I'll measure it and I'll cut this up, trim it up and make a, make a battery hold down. So let me just uh, get my goggles on and uh, cut this up. Yeah, this is, uh, I like it. Not going anywhere. I got to put a T, T thing right here. Finish welding that. Finish welding all this. And I kind of like it. The only problem is these, you know, these Chinese lights. Take a look right there. The bent tabs. So the thing's kind of flip-flopping around. But I'll, I'll fix, do something to fix it. <laughs>
Holy shit, better to be lucky than good. Oh, that's crazy. That's right on. Got that loose and uh, done. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna make sure we're gonna make a set of capture nuts for the back. I'll show you what that is. Because right now they will go in and out because it's so loose and oiled. But when there's get any rust on there, they'll just spin. So you have to use a wrench in the back. I don't want that. I just want to use one socket in the front, zap it out, and we're done. After that, I'm gonna um, weld up this crossbar and some other bits and pieces here. Finish up that, put everything together. We'll take it apart, put everything big together, and uh, we will get this episode done. All right, let's just uh, let me just do that, and we can get right on to doing the um, uh, rest of it. Small tie-up, couple seconds, boom, and we're done. Here we have the plates that we're going to be using to hold in the headlamp. What are we using? We're using this as a stiff, this is a stiffener bracket from an eight valve uh, Volkswagen motor. You know, it basically you put it on the side of the cam cover, it stiffens that sheet metal cam cover all the way down onto the head. What I want to do, there's two, this, I, I was, I cleaned up the back of those um, supports, the figure, and I was just going to weld the nuts right on that. I'm sitting there going, wait a minute, this thing actually moves back and forth. So that will cause stress on the nut when you put it in, it'll cause stress on the bolt. I really don't want that. All I want the bolt, I only want in the back is for the nut so I don't have to use another wrench. That's the big thing. And I'm going to use this and weld the nut to this. Now, seeing how this is larger, it gives me another benefit. What it does is I have one down here. I'm going to cut it, bend it up, then put the other one on there. That way I have a handle that I can use, put it in like this and thread the nuts in, zip them out, pull them out. It does two things. I'm happy. So let me um, get my glasses on. I'm just going to zip this out, you know, tack the nuts on, you know, probably just two sides, you know, and uh, get this thing all squared away. I think that's going to work. Uh, next thing is, well, let's weld the bar in permanently down here, weld the mounts in for the lower part of the intercooler in, hog them out so we can get those isolated bushings in there, weld the, the nuts on the back of this, weld up the uh, ducting, I'll do that on the bench, then we'll put everything back on, and you know, including the fenders, everything back on, let's see how it aligns up. Oh, cross your fingers.
six inch test drop completed. <laughs> Whew. Wow. I don't believe it. Um, the shell is basically done. I mean, all the hard fabrication work, trying to figure out how and where things are going to go, it's done. You know? Um, I'm, I am beat and, uh, and ecstatic at the same time. I'm trying to find words for it. But, you know, it's just like, you know, this is the whole process of this thing is being built out of recycled cars and parts, you know, except for the body kit. And hopefully, you know, you guys can do the same thing that I did. I mean, this shell, I mean, I'm, I can't really include the motor, but, you know, as in the running gear and everything, you know, it's going to be a $5,000 car. That's it. That's, that, that's hopefully it's going to be total cost into it, but I don't really know because I haven't really tabulated tabulated up a lot of stuff, but it, it's, it's looking like that, but man, it's pretty cool. You know, uh, hopefully you guys can run with what I did here. I mean, is it the best thing to do? It's the best thing for me at this time. You know, I don't know if it's any better, if you can find a, if you can find a better way to do it, fantastic, you know, but this is just what works for me and what I have lying around. And the whole thing is, is I want you know, people to go out there and just, you know, take old rotted out, you know, and recycle cars and recycle all the metal, you know, and, and build yourself something cool, you know, and that's it. And I think we now have something that's pretty neat. Ah, uh, it, I don't know. It's pretty, I'm, I don't know. I have, I don't have the words for it. It's pretty wild. You know, I mean, I, I can't run over everything we've done in this video. Because there's been so much, you know, this part one, part two, and uh, but it's we're on. It's this, a lot. The big stuff has been done, you know. I'm besides the motor and all that, but that's irrelevant. But um, oh, I don't know what else to say. But thank you very much. Hopefully, you know, this now gives you a roadmap so you can just go do your block. Another thing, if I was going to do it again, I'd start at the front and work back. I would have done all this first and then gone backwards, but. That's beside the point. Take my advice, you know. Um, but other than that, thank you very much for showing up. Remember, I am nothing special. I'm just some hillbilly out here in New Hampshire who wants to recycle a bunch of garbage, you know. And hopefully I'll bring smiles to everybody's faces when this thing drives down the road. <laughs> I'll be, I'll just be amazed if it does. But I think it will. I think it will, okay. But, all right. Well, thank you very much for showing up. I really appreciate it. And the hundred of... So people that even give two shits about this, thank you very much for watching, all right? <laughs> Thanks. Bye now.